I'm Jocelyn, and today's video is going to be all about the Texas 4-H Fashion Storyboard, because if you didn't know, it's now digital! So <laughs> I'll be made going over an example as well as reviewing the basics. But if you're ready, let's get started on a digital fashion storyboard. Before we get started, let me just remind everyone to visit the Texas 4-H website and go under the Fashion Interior Design section. This page is going to have everything you need for all the fashion interior projects as well as contests. And especially for the digital fashion storyboard, it's going to have everything you need from the label to the score sheet and most importantly the rules and guidelines. This document is super important. I recommend you download the document. So in my last video, I went over the basics and what you need for a storyboard. And pretty much everything stayed the same, except now it's digital. And there's a few other minor changes. And I will go over that as I show you an example of how to create a digital fashion storyboard. But first disclaimer, there's really, there's so many ways. There's so many ways to create a fashion storyboard because there's so many digital platforms and software programs that you can use to create one. There's no wrong way to create one. For this example, I'm going to use Canva, but you can use Canva, PicMonkey, Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, PowerPoint, there's so many different programs out there. Those are just a few. You can also use a combination and I will explain that at the end. So for this demo, I have all my photos ready, but for you, you need your images. So the best way to do that is either create a Pinterest board and save all your images there. So when you do have to reference them, you can find it or open a Word document and then have the title and the, and the link. So they're there for you. But image credit is a new feature that you need to be included in the 4-H storyboard. Those who are using Pinterest really quick, you don't, don't reference Pinterest. If you notice, like if you click on this fabric right here and you click on the actual image, this image is actually from Joanne. So the image credit would go to Joanne and not Pinterest because you can go here and then click on Pinterest and pin it. Pinterest is kind of like Google. It's a main hub of images. But once you have all your images, you're ready to get started. Today I'm using Canva. So Canva is a free platform that you can go to. If you don't have an account, you would just click the purple button where it says sign up and you would either use your Google, Facebook, or your email to create an account. And once you have your account, you're ready to get designing. So a really quick overview. You can create a design by clicking the button up here. It would show you all the different sizes and dimensions. You also can click any size that you want. You can see you can make a flyer or logo. We're not gonna mess with that today. We're literally gonna click on custom dimensions. And mine's already preset because I've been messing with it, but usually it'll be in a PX. And PX looks a lot different and we don't know those numbers by heart. So I don't want you to freak out. All you do is then click inches and then type in 18 by 24, because that is the recommended size the digital storyboard so when you're ready you click create new design and you are you have your page set up so there is some templates on the side some are free some are not free so the ones that say free obviously free say free the ones that don't they're not going to be free so when you download you're going to see that oh the cow is actually something you have to pay for and and it's a dollar so it's up to you if you want to do that but remember you could credit where credit's due. So if you do use an image from Canva, make sure to reference it. But just to give you an idea that not everything's free, it will say free if it's free and it will also, if it's not, there will not be a free button. But you can mess around with templates too if you needed to. Today we're gonna do a blank one, so I'm gonna delete everything. But up here is where everything you're gonna use, all your features. So today at the top is templates. You're gonna upload stuff. I have my images upload, but I'll re-upload just to give an example. Here's photos. So here you can add backgrounds if you want with a photo. I used this one earlier for one of my background images. So you can add a photo in the background if you want. And then elements is another feature that I truly think this is where you're gonna be the most busy because there's lines, there's shapes, there's frames. Frames basically is this, and let's say I wanna put this photo in there. Ta-da, it fits in within the frame. And I, you can do that with fabrics or whatever little feature you wanna mess with. Going back to elements, but there's also stickers, but stickers you're not really gonna use because they're animated. Charts, grids, gradients, 
I mean, you just mess around with it. There's so many little things you can add, icons. I mean, have fun. And then text is another part we are going to use because like any fashion storyboard, you need a title. The title is usually the design brief. For mine, I'm doing it exactly from my last one, which is catching the waves. Fashion design, catch the waves. You may add additional labels if needed. If you need to go over it. So my design is going to focus around hula dancers because I did a little workshop a few years back and I broke it down into subgroups and hula dancers was one of the subgroups. So you can have subtitles if needed, but definitely make sure you have your title. And if you can see, this image is really powerful and it's distracting from the words. So up here, there's a thing called transparency. So make sure you're clicking on the right thing. So earlier I was clicking on the words. So if I clicked on transparency, my words would fade. We don't want that. But your image is a little bright, right? So you can definitely fade your background if you want. So you have your title and a few labels. You can definitely add more labels later on. And then you need your inspiration image. So again, I had hula dancers in my last storyboard, as you can also see. I couldn't find that exact image, but I did find another one online. And this was the image that I found. So that's my image. You can definitely upload it. You can drag it in or find the file. And for fun, let's try a frame. So you would go to elements and then go to frames. And I'm liking this weird shape one. <laughs> so there's a frame and you drag your photo in there and now it's in there. But if you look really closely, it's kind of cutting off your legs and I don't like that. So you would just click, double click on it and then adjust it. Now you can't resize completely there is some restrictions, but you can definitely mess around with it. Also, I'm not liking the way that looks. I'm going to change frames. <laughs> and that's okay. You definitely have to play around and do the different features. I'm going to go back and do that. But I feel like it's a little too tall. So like you can also crop an image. So up here on the top, there's crop, there's flip. Maybe I want the hula to face around. She could be upside down. We're not going to do that. But you can definitely play with these features. I'm going to do flip again. And then I'm going to do crop because I want this to be just a little bit smaller. And then it's pretty big and I don't want it that big. So you can definitely, from the dot, move it in. And this is a recommendation for mop images because you don't want to skew it. You always want to go from the corners, never from the inside out. But you can crop that way as well. That's looking pretty good. So I have my hula dancer. For now she'll be up there. Then you need your illustration. So I do have one up already uploaded. Uh, again, for any uploads you can always drag it in or go to upload media. This illustration we also noticed is a digital one. I did use a combination of Photoshop and Illustrator and I will have another video on that. But you would upload your illustration. You can also take a photo or scan in your hand-drawn illustration. So you have options of which form you want to do. So you would drag in your illustration. You would place it wherever you want. You would also need your flat. You would also place it wherever you want. And a flat you can give. It's up to you if you want to have like a reference. I'm mimicking my last flat. On my last flat, I had lines. This time I put color. So to, for it to make sense, I'm going to add a little box for color. So you can go to elements, go to shapes, and put it on the side somewhere, and then pick the color. So what's really cool about Canva is like when you upload images, it usually has colors around similar. So you see these are the photos that were uploaded, and then they have some colors here to go around the theme of your photos uploaded. But I don't see my hat. I'm gonna to go to see all, and there's my hat. So the green on my hat is actually right here. So I'm gonna click on it, and now I have my fabric. And then in here, I would add another text and just say fabric print. And you can mess with the size of your text. You can drag it small. Over here, you can do it up here by size, or you can do what I was doing, or you can also make it bold if you think it's not coming out too strong. 
unfold it. You can play around with the different fonts. There's so many different fonts. I will say, just be careful. Some of the fonts are not easy to read. And again, not all of your font is free. So if there's a crown, you have to pay for it. So I don't want to mix around with the font. I would go up here. You can scroll down and look for them or I have some preset. So I'm going to use that one instead. I'm also like not liking the way it's coming out. So I'm going to hit enter. But I also want you to know, like right here, if you notice, you can't really see the fabric and it's not going to show that much detail. So you can also add another shape. Say it's this color. You can make it as big. And you're like, oh wait, it's covering everything. Don't freak out. Up here is a thing called position. And you can hit backward or to the back. So backward is just going to keep putting things behind images. So now it's behind everything. And you're like probably thinking, oh no, but it's covering everything else. How do I get my image? You use your transparency again. So the transparency up here, just shade it. So you can still see your background, but now you can see your fabric a little bit better. And you can play around with the colors again. You can use the preset ones that are from your photos. You can pick a new color. It's up to you what you want to do. I'm going to do a dark green for now. And now you can see that, hey, now my words are not really popping out. So that's where you play around with color, right? Contrast of colors. This is up to you what you want to do, how to get images bright or not bright. This is where you get your creativity out. So you have your words, you have your images, you would put all your labels, you do need a flat, you do need an illustration, you would label it. Oh, sorry, I went really fast, I forgot, I forgot to practice, but. So if you don't wanna keep adding, keep dragging text after text after text, you would click on your word, and then up here is a duplicate. So you would hit duplicate, and ta-da, it is duplicated. So it's the same font with the same size. So all you have to do now is change the words. I would hit flat. There's flat. Here's my illustration. And now you need your fabrics. So here's where you can play with the different frames. And some of the other drafts that I did, I did circles. I'll do a square now. So I do have a few fabrics. I have two fabrics. I would need two squares. I need to upload my fabric. So again, you can, I've been using the upload media. You can definitely go and drag your photos. And upload it. So you can drag that in. It's now uploading. Those are my two fabrics. They're being uploaded. This one I'm going to put up here. This I'm going to put up here. There you go. I also have an orange little button. Now, really quick, you're going to notice that a lot of my images don't are by themselves. I did use Photoshop for that. But there's nothing wrong with adding, let me add a new page, or better yet. But let's say you want to play around with the design. You can hit duplicate the page and use the same design, just duplicate it so you can mess around. But just to explain, you don't need to have a clear background for it to look nice. You can definitely add the image that you have saved. Don't feel pressure to have isolated you can upload this and then these are your buttons or using frames maybe you really just want the button you can put your picture in there make it this really big and try to isolate the button then you would minimize it and there you go there's your button so you don't have to have Photoshop to isolate things you can use frames to help with that as well Again, my illustration, I used a mix of Photoshop and Illustrator to get this combination and to also have no background. But if you look at the other examples on the right, like you can also just crop your image and just have the piece. You can have white background. There's nothing wrong with a white background. You can just, it's your design aesthetic. It's your features of what you want to do. These are the images that I have. And this is the very basic of what you need for your storyboard. And again, you can also turn your words. I have everything straight, but let's say you want planted. You can turn it. So right here is the up and down, and then right next to it is the curve, so you can turn the words. 
There's just so many features you can do on Canva and in general. So just make sure to take your time, have fun with this, play around with the different features. And when you're ready to download, you're going to go up here and hit download. So you do have some options. You can definitely download it as a ping. You can also download it as a JPEG and you can also download it as a PDF. So it's up to you on how you want to download it. Just be mindful because each like ping is a high quality, but it might be big in megabytes. So make sure to visit the Texas Forage website to find out about file size requirements. And that's it. So you hit download and you are ready. So there's no wrong way to do this. On the images you're seeing, I've done this eight different times and then I've done this storyboard eight different times. Like you can play around with different features. You can play around with different layouts. Just have fun. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't be shy. Make sure to comment below. Let me know what you need. If you need more resources, more tips and tricks, I'm here for you. So comment below, like the video and yeah, thanks for watching. I'm just awesome. Bye.